it was almost too good to believe. It still kind of is. Uh, it was an amazing experience, life-changing experience, but to be able to know that I was going to be able to go to South Africa and see penguins in their natural habitat and even help them was just beyond amazing. I really, really, really wanted to go to Boulders Beach because that's kind of, if you research South Africa and Cape Town and you see videos of people swimming with penguins and these really beautiful boulders, that's where it takes place at. And I just knew I had to see these animals in their natural habitat. I got all the way down to where the birds were and I just went, oh my gosh, and I just started basically crying because they're just everywhere. They're everywhere. And they were molting at the time, so there were feathers going everywhere. Uh, there were a couple of babies. But to see these animals just standing a couple feet from you, knowing that they're in their natural habitat, that was beyond amazing. That was, if I close my eyes, I can still kind of picture it. I can smell the air, I can see the birds. And I had a 10 minute walk to Sand Cobb every morning. There were so many birds and it was by a wildlife sanctuary too. So there are flamingos and I'm a big flamingo fanatic. So I, in one day saw penguins in their natural habitat, helped release penguins to their natural habitat and saw flamingos in their natural habitat. Sand Club was started by one woman who wanted to save oil penguins. And this sounds so cliche, but she started it in her own house and used her bathtub. <laughs> but these birds would need a lot of care and a lot of food, and she also wanted to get them used to where they came from. So she would go out to a tide pool and swim them two to three times a week and bring them back. And they didn't really know what to do with these oiled penguins. They weren't like an orphan dog or cat. There, there wasn't really a place for them. So she started Sand Cob and she got with the local wildlife officials and kind of everybody started to band together to protect them. And they've actually been around for 50 years now. African penguins can breed year round and they have to go through a yearly molt. When they go through this yearly molt, they stay on land for about a month and basically fast and live off of their fat reserves. But since they can breed year round, sometimes they have chicks that overlap with this molt. And unfortunately, they can't feed their chicks because they can't go into the ocean to get food. So the chicks kind of sit there and starve. The animal professional experience that I got to do specifically is a chick bolstering program. And bolstering is basically getting something healthy enough to be able to get it to where it needs to be. And in this case, where it needs to be would be back into the ocean, its natural habitat. I was going to be working in the nursery with, with uh, the baby penguins. Not in the ICU with the baby baby penguins, but kind of like the, the fluffy, cute birds that are learning how to eat on their own. When they gave me my first bird to tube feed, that was a little nerve wracking because you have this little bundle, this cute little animal that's relying on you for food, and he's still vocalizing at you for food but you're putting a tube in their mouth. So you have to put that in in a certain way and they train you on that. Once you get that in their mouth, then you um, squeeze the, the syringe, the formula goes in, and then they still look at you like, I'm hungry, like this didn't work. Can you give me some fish, lady? You also have to remember that these guys were abandoned from their natural habitat. So some of them were really, really shy. Some of them were kind of aggressive. Uh, some of them were scared. And some of them would just kind of sit there and let you do what you need to do. The African penguin is critically endangered. So there are only about 20,500 pairs of these birds left. Their population has been declining steadily for the past 100 years. One of the issues they're facing is finding food. They say if we leave about a third of the seafood for the animals in the ocean, then we'd be okay. But that's not happening. And they're looking further and further for their food. So. They're doing a good job trying to protect the animal, but what we need to do is also protect the resources that the animal needs. That would be supporting marine protected areas, eating sustainable seafood, and moving shipping lanes out. Um, these birds forage really, really close to the shore, pretty much right where these boats go. So if a boat does have an issue with oil, it's right where these animals are foraging for food. So that's a big problem. Uh, something we can do to help is just choose sustainable seafood because if we're leaving the food out there in the ocean for the animals, then they're gonna have a better chance of survival. Another issue with these guys is global climate change. So the fish are moving with the currents and we're not quite sure where they're moving and these birds are having to travel further and further to get their food. Now when you're an African penguin, you can breed year round. 
So you're constantly having the opportunity to make new baby penguins, but you gotta feed them too. Uh, so you have to go out, search for food, have enough nutrients for yourself, but also to be able to feed your one or two chicks. There's a lot of work to be done. I think Sandcop's doing a great job getting that word out there, but I think zoos and aquariums need to make sure that people really understand the state of the ocean to be able to conserve it and keep these animals around. If I could highlight like just one thing, it would be releasing those birds back to their natural habitat. I remember holding this bird thinking like, in an hour and a half, you're gonna be back in the ocean. Like this is your last time with us and you get to go be a penguin now. Like this is just amazing. And we all got to open up a box of penguins. <laughs> so there were two in my box and I was so excited that the first one got out that I didn't know there was another one in the box. <laughs> and so I needed a little bit of help <laughs> letting the other one go. And it was so amazing because they just went. I keep using the word amazing and spectacular and those kinds of things, but there really isn't a way to describe the feeling you get when you see these animals enjoying their natural habitat. Like there was this one um, moment, these birds were playing in this tide pool, like it was a spa and like just having the best time, like swimming around, jumping out of the water, going back in the water, playing in the waves. Just to see that, to see these guys being penguins was just beyond life changing. It was just so great. I've always felt that that was my role in life, was to help animals. And so this kind of helped it come full circle for me, and now I just want to help even more animals. <laughs> Going to Sandcob not only inspired me to keep doing what I'm doing, but do more, help more. There used to be millions of them, and in the past hundred years, their population is just being decimated, and we need to do something to protect them. And, and Sandcob's doing that. Um, but just one woman started it. Look, look how far it's come in 50 years. The fact that they took these 400 chicks this year and they're almost all back into the ocean, that's great. There, there isn't really anything better than that.